welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome back to the Do A Heartily channel. We are on day 264. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to talk about a very controversial topic. Lord, you know what it is. I know what it is. Eventually they're gonna know what it is. And uh, I just pray that hearts are tender, minds are open and focused on your word and your word alone. This is not a political agenda. This is not anything to try to convince someone of my opinion or anyone's opinion. Our goal is to look at truth and your word is truth. Help us to honor you. Help us to glorify you. I pray that you would use me as a vessel right now, that you would speak through me and that whoever is watching right now, that their hearts again would be tender and open and to receiving the preaching and teachings of God's word. Remove the devil and his distractions today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break from the book of Judges. Uh, I want to talk to you about abortion. This is a very controversial topic, even in Christian circles. Uh, not all Christians agree on this. Not all people that are not Christians agree on this. And I just want to make sure you understand where I'm coming from. I am not a politician. I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawmaker. I know there's some things going on in Texas right now. There's some things going on all over America right now. But my goal is not to convince you, hey, you need to agree with man's law or stance on this. My responsibility to you is to show you what the Bible says about this topic, abortion. Now, you're not going to find the actual word abortion in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. However, the Bible does talk about babies. The Bible does talk about human life in the womb. So we can go to scripture and we can go to science in regards to this as well. Because not all scientists agree, right? I mean, you know, oftentimes you'll see all of science agrees on dot, dot, dot. But this is one of those topics where some scientists believe this and some scientists believe that and some scientists believe this. And I want you to understand too, I can't cram every argument into one video. So we are going to take several videos to talk about this topic and what does the Bible say. Now, if you have questions about it, please hold all your questions until every video has been released on this topic because I may cover because I know there's an argument about, well, what if a young lady has been raped? You know, what does she do then? We're not going to talk about that today, but it will be covered. All the arguments and everything, it's going to be covered. It just can't there's just way too much to cover in one video. Okay, so again, this is not about should abortion be legal or illegal? Because, I mean, let's face it, even if it is illegal, if someone wants to get something done, whether it's legal or illegal, they're going to get it done. Okay, if a young woman or woman is pregnant, she doesn't want that child, and she wants an abortion, she is not going to care whether it breaks the law. She's just going to get it done. But we need to look at what God's Word says about it. Okay, enough talking about it. Let's jump into the Bible. Open your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1. Jeremiah, chapter number 1. Okay, so to give you a little bit of context here, God is talking to Jeremiah, okay? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5 says, this is God talking, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, the last sentence there, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations, that does not apply to you and me. Okay, that, because he's talking specifically to Jeremiah. However, the first part that he addresses to Jeremiah, that does apply to you and me and everyone else. Notice what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knew 
who you were before you were ever in your mom's stomach. God knew who I was before I was ever in my mom's stomach. God knows when human life is going to exist. Okay? And it says, Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. When a child is in the belly of his mother or her mother, God already knows who you are and he has his hand in that work. So, biblically, human life begins when God says it does. Okay? That's biblical. Now let's look at Psalms chapter 139. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 139. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. It says, uh, this is David talking about, the, by the way. For thou hast possessed my reins, look at this, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Verse 14, I will praise thee. What is he praising God for? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Look at verse 16. Thine eyes, he's talking about God's eyes, did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Okay, so... David is talking about being created and how God had a hand in David being created even when he was in his mom's stomach, womb, belly. Even when David was there, he said, hey, I'm going to praise you because I am wonderfully made. He even makes reference. He says, I'm not perfect, but God, I know you made me. Remember, we are created in God's image you are fearful and you need to recognize that today right here right now you are fearfully and wonderfully made by god okay now we don't have time to talk about it today but i want you to understand the bible contains many verses talking about the unborn each time the unborn is referred to it refers to them as a person a living being already in existence let's talk about science or the medical side of things in february miss kathleen who's sitting right behind the camera right now she took a pregnancy test and it tested positive positive means she has a living being growing inside of her now at the time of recording this video she's eight months along and visibly this baby has grown okay visibly she's eight months along one month from now she's going to give birth but when she first took the test her stomach was much 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 smaller meaning our child was much 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 smaller but it's interesting because from a medical side the doctor measured my wife's stomach miss kathleen's stomach and from an ultrasound was able to measure our child and tell us the first day that she was pregnant the first day that his life began and that was January 25th that was the first day she was pregnant that was the first day his life began they probably did the same thing when your mom was pregnant with you they could measure back to the exact day your life began now, for some scientists, for some doctors, they say life doesn't begin till eight weeks later. Life doesn't begin till 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 weeks later. But science also says the smallest piece of bacteria is also life. So why is it then that the smallest form of life inside of a mother's stomach is not a baby? Now, I have an illustration for you. Okay, I want you to look at this piece of paper here. I don't know if the camera's catching the whole thing, but I hope so. So let's pretend that this piece of paper is a full life of a human being. Let's say this is an 85-year-old man, and this is his full life. All right, so we're going to now rip the piece of paper. Now he's down to, let's say, 65 years old, okay? Then we rip another piece of paper, okay? This is almost half, not ripping it there, but let's say... 50 years old okay now we get down we're gonna go down now he's about 20 years old and then we rip it again 
Now he's starting, this is a teenager, all right? This is what a teenager looks like. Then we rip it down again. Now we're down to a child, maybe eight years old, okay? Now we rip it down again. Now the child, it's a baby, it's a toddler, okay? Then we rip it down again. Now this is, this is truly a baby, all right? Maybe uh, one years old, okay? Then we rip it down again, rip it to half. Six months old, we rip it down. Now the baby has just been born. Then we rip it again. This is when the baby is in the mother's womb. This is life. Maybe it's six, uh, six months she's pregnant. Then we rip it down again, and we rip it down again, and we rip it down again to the very first day that mom is pregnant. And it's so small. No matter, we, we started with this huge piece of paper. And it was a piece of paper. But every time I ripped, did it change from paper to something else? No. Every time I ripped, it stayed paper. No matter how small this is, it's still paper. Guys, the same is true for human life. No matter how big or small it may be, it's still human life. This is not the end of our discussion. We're going to keep going with this. We're going to look at it biblically, and we're going to look at it from a medical side, too, because it does support it, okay? Uh, I hope that your hearts are tender towards this discussion. I hope that your minds are open to it as well. If you have questions, write them down, and then once all of the videos are out, we're going to just maybe talk about three or four videos. Once they're all out, if I did not answer your question, or if you disagree about something, please talk to me about it. And, I, and if you disagree, I'm still going to love you. God's still going to love you, okay? But we just need to cover it from a biblical basis. We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.